Hello everyone. So welcome to the pharmacology recall of NEET PG 2021 and I'm Dr. Ankit. So in NEET there was a very beautiful question came a very conceptual question which came this year. Let's discuss about this question. A patient is on digoxin with some concomitant medication. At presentation the patient develops atrial fibrillation with controlled ventricular rate. Remember atrial fibrillation with controlled ventricular rate is the most characteristic arrhythmia due to digoxin. Okay and it tells us about digoxin toxicity. Now why this arrhythmia occurs because digoxin increases sodium and calcium level inside the heart so atrial fibrillation but below that it leads to AV node block so more impulse will come but AV node block is there hence the ventricular rate will be controlled and his serum digoxin level is raised from his previous value so again why it is a digoxin toxicity because the serum level of digoxin is raised now remember what should be the serum level of digoxin the serum level of digoxin should always be less than 2.0 nanogram per ml. So this is an additional information. But in this case, it is raised. It tells us about digoxin toxicity. Now, which of the following medications have enhanced digoxin toxicity? Now, the answer for this question is clarithromycin. Okay. Now, let's discuss why clarithromycin and why not triamterene, why not potassium chloride, why not etinolol and why the answer is clarithromycin. So for that we should know about digoxin. So if you know, if you recall the mechanism of action of digoxin, digoxin it inhibits one channel on our heart, myocardial fibers of the heart that is sodium, potassium, ATPase. We all know this part. Sodium potassium ATPase. Now what is the action of sodium potassium ATPase? It leads to inotropic effect. Inotropic means it increases force of contraction. Because of this reason cardiac output will increase and any drug which is an inotropic drug is given in the treatment of heart failure. Because in heart failure the force of contraction of the heart reduces. Hence the cardiac output reduces inotropic agents they produce opposite effect they increase force of contraction and increase cardiac output now let's see suppose this is the myocardium of the heart and on this myocardium we have one channel which we have written that is sodium potassium ATPase now what is the function of sodium potassium ATPase is to throw back sodium outside into the blood and this is myocardium and to bring back potassium into the heart and this functions with the help of an ATPase enzyme that means it is an energy dependent transportation. So what digoxin does, digoxin beautifully it comes and digoxin blocks this potassium binding site. So digoxin blocks potassium binding site of this channel which will increase intracellular sodium because this channel is now inhibited. This increase in intracellular sodium inhibits another channel which we will discuss in the class NCX sodium calcium exchanger which increases intracellular calcium and this intracellular calcium increase the binding of actin and myosin which increases inotropic effect. So this whole mechanisms for a moment we will not discuss let's focus on this potassium site. So hence digoxin and potassium they want to bind to the same site. If potassium will bind the channel will work. If digoxin will bind the channel this sodium potassium ATPase will not work. Hence can we say there is a competition between digoxin and potassium. So can we say that if there is hypokalemia in blood. If there is hypokalemia in blood. Can we say more digoxin will bind to myocardium 
and if more digoxin will bind to myocardial sodium potassium ATPase it may lead to toxicity as well so hypokalemia in blood increases digoxin toxicity so hypokalemia in blood leads to digoxin toxicity which may lead to arrhythmias which we have discussed now let's see we have understood that hypokalemia is dangerous and one of the contraindication of digoxin is hypokalemia we never give digoxin in hypokalemia if the potassium is less there will be more binding of digoxin so the statement which we have learnt is that if there is hypokalemia in the blood it increases digoxin toxicity okay now there are certain class of drugs known as loop and thiazide diuretics loop and thiazide diuretics they produce hypokalemia because the potassium will be lost out in urine and hence they increase digoxin toxicity okay second is any drug which is a ras inhibitor renin angiotensin aldosterone system inhibitor remember the function of ras or the function of aldosterone hormone in our body is to increase sodium retention it reabsorbs sodium and it causes potassium loss or hypokalemia so if you inhibit this aldosterone can we say opposite effect will come so ras inhibitor inhibit at the end aldosterone and ras inhibitors they cause hyperkalemia so hyperkalemia will not cause digoxin toxicity okay so hyperkalemia will have opposite effect so first point is beta blockers beta blockers like atenolol which is given in the option beta blockers they block beta 1 receptor on gg cells of kidney and beta blockers they decrease renin release hence beta blockers they produce hyperkalemia so beta blocker will not cause digoxin toxicity second is second is potassium sparing diuretics because potassium sparing diuretics they inhibit the action of aldosterone on kidney so they inhibit the action of aldosterone on kidney they will also lead to hyperkalemia so they will also not lead to digoxin toxicity can you tell me certain names of potassium sparing diuretic the mnemonic is s e a t c t that is spironolactone eplerinone amyloride and one option which was given in the question triamterene so triamterene is also a potassium sparing diuretic and it will also lead to hyperkalemia because they block the action of aldosterone on kidney beta blockers they also cause hyperkalemia hence they will also not lead to digoxin toxicity no and the third option which is given in the option is that is potassium chloride you are giving potassium from outside don't you think potassium will lead to hyperkalemia in the blood so again potassium will not lead to hence the potassium will not lead to digoxin toxicity so these three options are given so i'll come back to the question so triamterene is a potassium sparing diuretic because it's a potassium sparing diuretic it will lead to hyperkalemia hence hyperkalemia will rather reduce digoxin toxicity potassium will bind to sodium potassium atpase so it will also increase potassium it itself is a potassium and beta blocker they also increase potassium because they decrease renin release agree so now we have ruled out a c and d now let's talk about why clarithromycin is the correct answer so for that we must know that digoxin is a substrate of one transporter on our cell known as p glycoprotein which we have discussed 
Now, what do you mean by P glycoprotein? P glycoprotein is a type of efflux transporter. We discussed in our classes very well. Efflux transporter and the function of this efflux transporter is suppose this digoxin is going towards the cell. So there is a transporter P glycoprotein. It will again hold this digoxin and throw it back. It will throw it back. It will not allow a digoxin to enter into the body. So any drug which is a substrate of P glycoprotein. So what is the function of P glycoprotein? P glycoprotein will decrease absorption of digoxin. Because this P glycoprotein is present in GIT. P glycoprotein increases the excretion of digoxin. Because this P glycoprotein is present in kidney. So overall the function of P glycoprotein is not to allow this drug to remain in the body. So its function is to remove the drug out of the body or reduce absorption of a drug. So any drug which is a substrate of P glycoprotein, P glycoprotein will not allow a drug to enter into the body. If the drug has entered, it will make this drug remove out of the body through kidney. Now the problem is there are certain drugs which can increase or decrease the activity of P glycoprotein. So those drugs are known as P glycoprotein inhibitor which will decrease the activity and P glycoprotein inducer. So first I will tell you the names of P glycoprotein inhibitor. We will write the mnemonic quacker. Q for quinidine, verapamil, amiodarone, clarithromycin. So this mnemonic we discuss in class also. Ketoconazole and ritonavir. Ritonavir is an anti-HIV drug. Among P glycoprotein inducer, one anti-tubercular drug, rifampicin. Now, any drug which is a P glycoprotein inhibitor will decrease the activity of P glycoprotein. Don't you think more digoxin will come into the blood and less digoxin will be excreted out of the kidney? So can we say that P glycoprotein inhibitors they increase digoxin levels in the blood and in the body hence they increase digoxin toxicity because more digoxin will be absorbed and less digoxin will be excreted and any drug which is a P glycoprotein inducer will lead to decrease effect of digoxin because the blood level and inside the body the digoxin level will reduce it will be less absorbed it will be less uh, it will be more excreted out of the body hence if you can see that we have already written clarithromycin is a p glycoprotein inhibitor and any drug which is a p glycoprotein inhibitor increases the toxicity of digoxin so why clarithromycin is the answer why clarithromycin causes digoxin toxicity because clarithromycin is a P glycoprotein inhibitor and any drug which is a P glycoprotein inhibitor will increase the absorption it will decrease the excretion because of this reason the blood level of digoxin will increase and if the blood level of digoxin will increase, it will lead to digoxin toxicity. And the most characteristic arrhythmia because of digoxin toxicity is atrial fibrillation with control ventricular rate and the serum level will increase. So a beautiful question came in NEET 2021 and a very conceptual one which we already discussed in our class. 
सो थैंक यू वेरी मच